Hi everyone, in this video we are going to focus on understanding the value of inventory aggregation for supply chains. Companies could choose either to utilize local inventories in the locations that they serve in or they could aggregate the inventories and have one centralized location to take care of the inventory problem. In our example, we assume that we own a clothing company that has two stores. And one of these stores is in New York City, the other one is in Troy, New York. Each t-shirt costs us $5 and the holding cost is 25% of the unit cost. In terms of the demand data, we know that the mean demand is 300 t-shirts and the standard deviation is 50. For the Troy store, the mean demand is 25 t-shirts and the standard deviation is 10. So all of these demand values are weekly values. So our time period is weak. Um, so our goal is to have a 90% cycle service level and we use a continuous review policy. We assume that demand at each location is independent and normally distributed and the replenishment lead time is three weeks regardless of delivery location. What we want to find is how much safety inventory is required in the New York City store, how much safety inventory is required in the Troy store, and how much inventory safety inventory is required if the inventory at both locations is centralized at the New York City store. So the first thing we need to do is since this is a continuous review policy we are going to use the formulas for this policy and in terms of data if we summarize for New York City and Troy so mean and standard deviation so mean is 300 and standard deviation is 50. For Troy, the mean is 25 and standard deviation is 10 units. And SCL, which is from the problem definition, the desired cycle service level is 90%. So SCL is 90% and cost of one t-shirt to us is $5. and holding cost H is 25%. So in part A, we want to find the safety stock, safety inventory for New York City store. Since this is a continuous review policy, the formula we use is CSL times square root of L times standard deviation of the demand. So D, our, this sigma D is standard deviation and this value here is, so FS is the standard normal cumulative distribution function. And we are going to take the inverse of this and CSL is 90%. So basically we are going to go to Z table and look for 0.9 and we are going to find the value that corresponds to 0.9. So to find this value, I am going to go ahead and look at the corresponding part of my Z table. So if we use, choose a different color, red. So looking for 0.9 in this table. So 0.9 is somewhere in between this value and this value, right? So somewhere in here. So we know that 0.8997 is 1.28. And this is because 1.2 comes from here and 0.008 comes from here. And in a Z table, normal distribution table, you this is how you find your Z values. So for 0.8997, the value, the Z value is 1.28. For 0.9015, 
our value is 1.29. So what we want to do is to find the value for 0.9, right? So I am going to use linear interpolation. So change the color. So basically in a linear interpolation, what I know is 128 has a value of 0.8997. And 1.29 has a value 19015. And our value that we are interested in is somewhere in between 0.1, 0.9. And the value I'm looking for is x. So in a linear interpolation, what I do is 0.905, this value, minus. 0.8997, this value, minus 1.29 minus 1.28, this value and this value. So basically, I'm looking for the differences in between the first and the second values that I already know from the table. And that ratio has to be equal to 0.9 minus 0.8997 and what I'm saying is here we took difference between these values right and now I am taking the difference between these two and we are going to divide this by x minus 1.28 so this time took this so basically what I say here is the ratio between these two must be equal to the ratio between these two and this is the idea of interpolation so if we compute these values 0 0.008 divided by 0 0.01 equal to 0 0.003 x minus 1.28 so from here we see that this is six this is one because this is this value is six times this value and this tells me 6x minus 6 times 1.28 equals 0.01 and 6x minus 7.68 equals 0.01 6x equals 7.69 and x from here found to be 1.282 so the value that i am looking for like i said it is between 1.28 and 1.29 and what i found with this interpolation is the value i'm looking for is 1.282 another way to find this is to use an excel function and that one is norms in so you're basically going to type this and enter 0.9 and this is also going to give you 1.282 and if you have access to excel that's very simple you don't need to deal with this but if you don't have access to excel then you are going to use interpolation or a calculator that you have so going back to our part a so now i found that this value is 1.282 so therefore 1.282 times square root of l l is in our case three looking at the problem description replenishment lead time is three weeks so this value is our l value so square root of l which is square root of three multiplied by the standard deviation of demand so for new york city standard deviation is 50. and this value is equal to 111.0 t-shirts so safe to stock for new york city is 111 t-shirts part b asks us to find the safety inventory for the Troy store. So similar idea, the same formula. SS is our 
z value is still the same because we still look for 90 percent of csl value and 1.282 times replenishment lead time is still three weeks and square root of three and the standard deviation this time is 10 and this 10 comes from here and this 50 comes from here and this value is equal to 22.20 t-shirts assume that in another case you have multiple stores say you have five stores in smaller cities like troy and mean and standard division are the same then in that case if you are asked to find the total safety stock say you have five stores then you are going to multiply five by 22.2 if you're asked to find the general safety stock for all of these five but in our case we have only one store and we focus on only one of them having multiple ones you're basically just going to multiply the number of stores that you have and your safety stock and part C asks us how much safety inventory is required if the inventory at both locations is centralized at the New York City, City store. So part C, so we are going to centralize. We need to find the aggregate demand. Demand per week is 300 plus 25. And these are from these values at the top. 325 t-shirts per week standard deviation is this is again for each week the standard deviation for new york city is 50 take the square of it standard deviation for troy 10 take the square of it and square root of is this value is going to give us a standard deviation of this aggregated one and this value is 50.99 and now safe to stock formulation is still the same and my z value is 1.282 multiplied by replenishment lead time sorry l is 3 times my standard deviation this time is 50 0.99 and this value is equal to 111.22 t-shirts so if we look at the comparison between these what we see is we saved some inventory so reduction reduction from inventory is reduction in SS from aggregation. So in part A, we found that the inventory is 111.02 and part B for Troy store, we have 22.20. And this sum is equal to 133.22 t-shirts but in aggregated case we found that we could get 113.22 and this difference is the reduction in the safety stock that we gained from aggregation so 25 to 20 t-shirts basically so what i basically do is if i do these safety stocks separately new york city has 111.02 Troy store has 22.20, but when I aggregate these, I get 111, 113.22. And the difference between this independent and aggregated one is 20 t-shirts. And holding cost saving, since we have less inventory by aggregating this inventory, the holding cost that we save is going to become 20 which is the amount that we just saved times 25%, which is our holding cost percentage, which is from here. And this was per unit cost and our per unit cost is 
25 dollars and this value is 25 dollars so by aggregating the inventory we say 25 dollars so in our case since one t-shirt is five dollars and the inventory cost is 25 percent of that cost value this value seems to be a small value but if you think about a company that sells items for thousand dollars or million dollars then this is going to be a big amount of sale one last thing is what if we had multiple stores so say we have k k new york city locations and t troy locations so when you compute the aggregate inventory so for say for demand in demand case you are going to say 300k new york city plus 25 t troy is going to be your demand per week value for aggregate inventory for standard deviation you are going to use a similar idea and say okay 50 times 50 squared times k and yc plus 10 squared t troy and this is going to be your uh, standard division for this aggregate plan and the safe to stock formula is the same because there is nothing that depends on it but the thing that also you need to consider like i mentioned earlier in part a if you have k new york city stores then your value is going to become 111.02 times k nyc and for troy location you're going to have 22.2 times t troy safe to stock but we said we say we have one store in each location but if you have multiple stores then you are going to consider the number of stores that you have and based on that you are going to compute your aggregated demand standard deviation and safe to stock so this ends this video thanks for watching